instructions you were given. Jesus, I will obey you. Jesus, I will obey you. Jesus, I will obey you. Kaya la bronia safara de beni et tabana. We will obey you, Jesus. We will obey you, Jesus. We will obey you, Jesus. O la bronia safara do beni faradama. Jesus, I will obey you. Jesus, I will obey you. Jesus. Jesus, I will obey you. Jesus. The Lord will respond to you this morning. Jesus, Jesus, we will obey you. Jesus, we Jesus, I will obey you. Jesus, I will obey you. Jesus, I will obey you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We well, thank you for your mercies, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
the Lord, we ascend to your heights. Lord, we receive your mercy this morning. We we'll thank you for seasons of mercy over us. Seasons of visitation of heaven. Seasons of light. Thank you for washing our fieldiness. Thank you for opening our eyes. You are still opening our eyes, but Lord, we thank you for causing your light to shine. Break in strongholds of darkness. Thank you for taking away veils of darkness. Thank you, Jesus, for so, so, so great work that you have done and that you are still doing. We are grateful, Lord. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Let's just go to one or two people this morning and thank them for making it this far. God bless you for coming. You're welcome in Jesus' name. You're welcome, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to appreciate everyone that has um, been consistent with Family Life Summit 2022. Thank you for making yourself available. Um, receiving God's word week in, week out from four weeks ago. I will thank God for how God has, I believe God has reached us a lot. Can we say amen? amen. Uh, yes, I, I, I can perceive blessing that has come to us. Great one. Uh, the whole house is, is looking more elder because of the words that have been spoken. You know, words wash us. Yes, the worshipers, they, 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 they make us see our darkness and make it, it makes it easy for us to turn from things that we had once thought were right into God's standards. So, I believe that we are aligning. Can we say amen? amen. I want to appreciate everyone that has given and labored um, for the success of this meeting. Um, you know, we have never done this meeting this big before. It just used to be some few days um, and all that, but I don't know, the thing just started getting bigger. And this year, I just sense that we should have guest ministry for every week. But I, I, I <laughs> well, we thank God for granting us grace to do it. That's the only thing I will say. Amen. Um, God was the one that gave us grace. So I want to thank everyone that gave to the meeting. You you allowed your seed to enter into it. And for all those that have labored and um, prepared and served in every capacity, I want to appreciate all the pastors in the house for all they are doing. Can we appreciate them? Pastor Friday, Pastor God's Power, thank you, sir. Pastor CG and Pastor Dio. Can we appreciate them? Amen. I want to appreciate Ronke. Where is Ronke? Can you let me appreciate Ronke? Ronke, thank you so much. Um, Ronke was coming from Lagos. She's doing a course in Lagos. Uh, but she comes every week for the, for the program. And I appreciate what she has, she's doing. Uh, you know, Ronke is already becoming a... Eh? Everybody has seen, you know? Can you appreciate my wife for that? It's, it's, it's war. It was war, but... Roke cannot handle the kitchen well without stress. Um, yeah. Thank you, sweetheart, for, for training her, yeah. uh, for, for raising her. She's, be, she's becoming a mother. Yeah. Yes, uh, and I'm so glad. When Roke first came to us, she was like, she was butter. <laughs> you know, I remember when she used to, when she used to say English, me, me, me. I said, this was a lele. What is it by lele? But I thank God for her now, okay? She's doing a great job. I want to appreciate the kitchen and what they did. Can we appreciate them once again? <laughs> thank you so much. And all the protocol team walking along with the room, okay? Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We love you.
Amen. Who is taking that out of you both? Pastor Friday. Okay. I, I think it's a word for R. So. It's my hand even upon her. Amen. It's my hand even upon her. Amen. It's my hand even upon her. Amen. Everyone can change. No one, no one that stays will escape change. No one that stays will escape being raised. Everyone can change. Everyone can change. Amen. Everyone can change. I want us to know that everyone can change. Everyone can change. Anyone that decides to stay, that decides to stay and refuse to be offended, and refuse to be offended, will change. The person will change. She stays. She stays. She stays and refuse to get offended. She stays even when she's been corrected and refuse to get offended. She is changing. She is getting better. She is getting better. She is getting better. She is getting better. You also can change Man. if you stay. If you stay, do not be distant from leadership. Take close. Stay close. Take the correction. Take the correction. Take the correction. Take the correction. You also can change. You also can change. You also can change. You also can change if you decide to stay. If you refuse to be offended. If you decide to receive correction. If you refuse to distance yourself from leadership and oversight. Definitely you will change also. See the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm not yet true with you. Amen. I'm not yet true with you. Amen. My hand is still upon you. I'm not yet true with you. There's, there is a place I'm seeing. You are not yet there, even though you are responding to me. You are responding to me. I am the one that came upon my handmaiden to raise you. I am the one that came upon her. Even sometimes I do possess her by my spirit. I do possess her by my spirit so that she will not spare you. I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you that you don't yet even know anything about. I have a plan for you. I'm not yet true. I'm not yet true. Yes, here the Lord have opened another chapter for you. I'm opening another chapter for you. I'm opening another phase of training. It's going to be a different order of training because I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you. Yield again to me. Amen. Yield again to me. Amen. I'm not yet true. I'm not yet true. I'm not yet true. Do not rest in your heart. I'm not yet true. Be patient. Be pacing. I want to do a thorough work in you. Amen. I want to do a work that is strong and thorough. I want to build a thorough nature on you. I'm not yet true. Yield to my spirit. I'm coming again with plenty commandments. Yield to my spirit. Yield to my spirit. Mm. Yield yourself to my spirit. Yield yourself to my spirit. Yea, I'm not yet true. Amen. Do not think uh, finally it is finished. No, it's not yet finished. 
It's not yet finished. It's not yet finished. It's for your own good. It's not yet finished. I still have a lot to do. I still have a lot to do. So get ready. I'm coming. I'm coming again with a stronger hand upon you. I'm coming again with a stronger hand upon you. I have a lot in stock for you. See the Lord. Amen. The Lord will strengthen our... Amen. Ronke, we love you. I love you from my heart. I'm sure you know that. But I'm a very shy person. Amen. But I love Ronke so much. Okay? Hallelujah. People don't believe I'm shy. Uh, anointing love him preach amen. <laughs> privately if you know you know i'm a very if you if you live around me i just i laugh i play but i'm a, i can be very private i'll just i can be in the house you wouldn't know i'm in the house i'm just in one corner amen okay um thank you sweetheart for all you do um can we appreciate mommy thank you <laughs> hallelujah Thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Who have I not greeted? I greet everybody. Okay, I greet technical, uh, camera, all of you, children, all of you. I love all of you from my heart. Uh, Onesimus, you came back. Onesimus. You are welcome. They had a meeting this weekend. I wasn't expecting him. Um, fellow, fellow bond servant. Uh, amen. I you won't say anything. Francis. <laughs> you will do frog job. <laughs> I'm just joking. Onesimus, God bless you. Onesimus is a pastor with FBS. Um, but he loves us so much and he's becoming part of this house. I appreciate you so much and your wife. God bless you. I, I, I love his heart. He has a very wonderful heart. I like that kind of heart. Mm? Amen. I greet everybody. Okay? Mommy, thank you so much. You know, I didn't allow yesterday's message to... I listened to it this morning. Yes. That kind of message, you shouldn't leave it hanging. I'm a bit, do, you, do you agree with me? You don't leave it hanging. So, I, this morning, while coming, because um, services used to be earlier but for, for, for this program... I just quickly listened to the message so that I quickly, I'm very sure that it entered well. And I, I thank you so much, man, for yielding to God. Mommy yielded to God yesterday. And um, I'm beginning to see the, the wisdom for building um, in the work. And when I mean this work, this work beyond um, this assembly, many assemblies after this order that God is raising. I see a kind of pattern. I was trying to tell her yesterday. I noticed that the women, uh, mommy carries a grace that is instructive and pastoral in its demonstration. And I noticed that all the women are also patterning after that. Do you all agree with me? It's the same thing if you check, uh, my wife check, Dukbe Yima, check, um, what was her name? Precious Gabriel. All of them, all of the women are just patterning. They have one kind of grace. That I don't know. I know it's God. Amen. I thank you, Ma, for wearing that cloak in the spirit. Because you're all looking up to you as a model. Thank you for causing us to see the place of instructions, of wisdom. Uh, those are insights that will cause us to be able to bring out the expression of the life. Well, thank you so much, Ma. So, um, can we all stand to our feet as we receive mommy again this morning? Um, we should have a long stretch this morning. Can we say amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Keep clapping as we receive her. Thank you, man. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. The Lord bless you mightily. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I want to thank every one of you. Thank you for hosting me this weekend. Thank you for your love for the Lord. Thank you for your, the attitude you have towards the word of God, willing to learn, always present in meetings, and never tired of hearing. 
we will hear and hear and hear and hear until we become Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. None of you will fall short of becoming all that God has ordained you to become. Amen. In the days of your flesh, you will trap God. Amen. You will trap all of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much for loving me, for having faith in the grace of God upon my life. I appreciate you so much. I love you. I thank you for, for your tenacity, your commitment to the truth. And, uh, you know, always wanting to know more and go deeper into God is a great grace. And the Lord will help you to finish well. In Jesus' name. And Pastor Fisayo, I love you so much. You are my, you are my, you are my, you are somebody I love so much. And I know you love me. And I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your love. I appreciate your, I appreciate your, your, how will I put it now? Friendship. Although you say I'm not your friend. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. I love you. Thank you for standing by Pastor. Thank you for your heart, ever willing to learn, ever willing to change. And the Lord will help you Amen. and bring you to the finish in the name of Jesus. Amen. I thank God for all the pastors. Pastor Friday, Pastor Shijibomi, I won't forget it again. Pastor God's power, God bless you so much. Thank you for standing strong. You know, the Lord really admonished you yesterday to stand by Pastor and join him. Do what God has committed into his hand. It's not weakness. It's a strength. It's a strength. It's a great strength. The Lord will give you more revelations, more understanding, so that you can take your place and then you get all the reward that you are meant to get in the name of Jesus. And I thank all the pastors, everybody, all the workers in the church. I thank you for your love, for your the grace upon you. The kitchen people, thank you for feasting me with Akara every morning. <laughs> you know my heart. I enjoy that Akara too much. I appreciate you. Thank you <laughs> for standing in your place. Don't let anybody take your place except God promotes you to another level. But it's a good place to, to, to stand. Yes, it's a good. No place is too little. In the house of God to stand. In fact, the more hidden you are, the better it is for you. That is one secret we need to do. Our God who sees in secret will reward you openly. The more hidden you are, whether you are the sweeper, whether you can go from sweeping to becoming a mighty apostle. That's what you don't know. To becoming a mighty apostle, no matter where you find yourself, do it with all your heart. All your heart. There's no, there's hardly any place I have not served in the church. I served as an usher. I served as an usher. And when I'm serving as an usher, I'm going as a preacher. Do you understand? I will go, I will be ghosted. When I stand by the door to welcome people, I'm ghosted. Because you don't come, do you understand? And, and I remember, you know, those who raised us, those days, they, they helped us a great deal. I remember um, uh, one of our, the father of our pastor, he used to come to church for a special program. And we're very close because he's such, he was a, such a sweet man, very friendly, very nice. So one of those days, I was coming from work. I was coming from work for midweek, for a program during the week. So, and I was late. Not because I wanted to be late, but because of work. The time I closed, the traffic from Lagos Island to Akoka, where the church was. Wow. So as I was entering, I was going to church. I was going to I just, and I met him at the door. I was now greeting him and laughing. He looked at me. He said, look at you. You are coming late to church and you are laughing. He said, go inside and go and be paid. Now look. He said, she thinks she's going to be an usher forever. She thinks he's a prophet. He's a prophet. <laughs> Said she thinks she's going to be an usher forever. She thinks she's going to be an usher forever. They go inside. I ran inside. I was an usher. And I did so well as an usher. But God, God is the one that marks also. But I think I tried. 
I, I, I served as a young uh, believer's uh, class teacher. And I did it. When I teach them, they say, ah, it's like we just come on again. You do it with all your heart. Yes, Unto the Lord. Yes, Unto God. the Lord. Unto the Lord. The Lord is the one who rewards. Yes. He's the one who rewards. From young uh, believers class uh, teacher, I became a deaconess. In fact, when they give me, my pastor will give me um, names of uh, people to go and follow up. He can give me like five names. And he's expecting me to bring, I didn't know he was expecting me to bring results to him in two, three weeks. And then before the end of the week, I've brought a report. Say, eh, what is that? I said, I've seen all of them. Say, you saw all of them. Ah, I was not expecting you to bring me a report. How did you do it? You saw all of them. I said, I've seen all of them. And I'll give a report on each and every one of them. <laughs> he was the one who made me feel funny. Say, ah, clearly, I, I, I expect you to come back in two, three weeks. And in one week, you have seen all of them. I have the time. I have seen all of them. Not, I was not doing it for pastor. I was doing it unto the Lord. He's the Lord that sees you in secret. He rewards openly. He rewards openly. From there, I became a deaconess in the church. Served as a deaconess. Like that, I was growing. Served as a deaconess in the church. Something happened between me and Pastor. I got angry and left. But where I went to, I knew I was in the wilderness. I had no, no bearing any longer. So I now told this our pastor's father. I said, he, because he was still related with me, even though I left the church for a while. So I said, Papa, I don't even know what is happening. He said, you are in the bush. <laughs> hey, he said, you are in the bush. You have no bearing. Go back to your church. I said, go back to your church. So I went back. I went to meet Pastor. I said, Pastor, I'm back. I'm coming back. I said, nobody drove you from church before. <laughs> I said, I'm back. And he said, uh -uh. go and stay in church. You know, I was a deaconess before I left. So I was no longer a deaconess. I relinquished my deaconess uh, this thing. So I had to go and queue again. I killed again in the church. The people that we were deacons together and deaconess, they had become pastors. So I was not a deaconess. I was just a regular church member. And I remember one of my friends, they, we are friends, you know. We were deaconess together. So he would now come and say, Helen, come. You know, you have to obey me now. I'm a pastor. <laughs> Do you know I was not offended? I was not offended. If you get offended... In church, you will not go too far. Yeah. Offense will stop you. Yeah. Offense will stop you. You will be in the bush. You will not be able to march forward. Yeah. I was not offended. So later, my pastor now called me and said, I want to ordain you again as a deaconess. <laughs> ah, ah. So I said, ah, pastor, no. I don't want to. Because me and my pastor, we are cl very close in age. He's about two years older than me. And I finished school before that, but I submitted under him. I finished school before him. I finished school before his wife. Yes. But I submitted under him as my pastor. And I thank God I did. It was in that assembly that my husband met me. In fact, he was the one God told that this is Helen's husband. Because he was the one that knew my husband. And the Lord said, this is Helen's husband. And he never said anything to me. He didn't tell me. He just brought my husband and made sure that we came close. And that was it. He was the one God used to connect us. Can you imagine if I had left? Can you, can you imagine? Uh, the devil will fight you to lose destiny. So when he said I should, I said, Pastor, no, let's, let me just be like this. I don't want to serve as anything. Let me just be serving God. So he said, ah, okay. He was supposed to ordain us that Sunday. When I said I was, he now canceled the ordination. <laughs> I went back home and the Lord said, what did you say? You told your pastor you don't want to be ordained a deaconess? He said, go back to him and tell him you are sorry. And that you are ready to be ordained now. <laughs> so I went, I rushed by, I said, pastor, 
I'm sorry, oh, that I said I don't want to be ordained. <laughs> I'm ready now. Come on, ordain me as a dickiness. <laughs> you know, when you miss those tongues in the spirit, when you miss those tongues in the spirit, when you miss those tongues in the spirit, he takes humility to, to follow God all through. You have to be collapsing and collapsing and coming down. Am, am I preaching already? Yeah. 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 Ah, I forgot. I wanted to greet uh, a Hannah and the husband to thank them and appreciate Let me appreciate them for bringing me and ministering to me. I appreciate them seriously. They are taking it as a ministry. <laughs> you know, the, way, the way Hannah ministers to me, she's, she's, she's taking it as a ministry. And I know you will not lose your reward. Yeah the Lord will bless you beyond what you can ever think. You are going somewhere that you don't even know yet. But the Lord will take you there gradually as you, as you are faithful in whatever you find your hands to do. And even the husband, the two of them are, they are servants. Yes, they are servants. God brought them together. They are one of the same kind. Uh, praise the Lord. The Lord the Lord will take you to where you are supposed to be Amen. and you'll be established there Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. We exalt you. Lord, I ask for mercy. I ask for help. I ask for grace that you help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me to bless your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. What I'm just seeing in my heart is a place of lowliness and humility to fulfill the will of God. If you are not humble and meek and coming down always, Bible talks about, it says, I beseech you, brethren, that's Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4. <laughs> oh my God. Ephesians 4 from chapter, from verse 1. Okay, it's not coming up. I should use my iPad. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, the prisoner, prisoner, if you are not imprisoned by the Lord, you cannot fulfill his will. Amen. You have to be in chains. You know, one time I was reading this in, and the Spirit of God just whispered to me, he said, you are a prisoner. He said, you are a prisoner. A prisoner does not do what he likes. A prisoner is regimented. The food they eat, they measure it for them. The time to sleep, they tell them. The time to wake up, they tell them. Their life is regimented. They are imprisoned. They are in chains. And what puts you in chains is not a physical chain. It's the Lord. It's the spirit of God. That he, and some people can jailbreak. <laughs> Some people can gain break. They will overpower and overcome the spirit of God. Because when the spirit talks to you, do this, do this. I say, I'm not doing, I'm not doing, I'm not doing. I'm not. And you keep doing your own. Then you are no longer a prisoner. And it takes prison, imprisonment to be able to do all the will of God. Because you don't know the will of God. It is in the spirit and it is by walking in the spirit that you locate will will from time to time. So I was saying, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. We have a vocation. We are being called to a vocation. What is our vocation? Eternal life. Hallelujah. Life is our vocation. We are, if you lose sight of life, you will not do a lot. You won't make progress. Mm. If all you are looking for is life, uh, all right, you will become the journey all day. Life. Strong people don't get this life. Stubborn people. Don't get it. Walk worthy of your vocation. How do we walk worthy of the vocation? The next verse. 
with all lowliness and meekness. Uh, with what? Long suffering. For bearing one another in love. This makes you qualified for the vocation. Without this, you can't journey too far. You can't journey too far because there are turns you make and the Lord will want to turn you. But you will be too, you'll be too proud to take that bend. To take that turn. You see, when, when, when you are not able to say, I am sorry, a lot of people are so hard, they, they can't say, I am sorry. Why? Because I, I should not be seen to be wrong. You know, when you say, I'm sorry, it shows that you can be wrong and you are wrong. What says, who says you cannot be wrong? Have you become God? As long as you are not God, you can still be wrong. And it takes humility to say, I am wrong. I turn. I take a different turn. I've taken a wrong turn. So when the Lord told me, go back, I had to swallow my pride. I came down. Because I know that Somebody will say, eh, hey, Shebo, why did you did not come back? I know somebody will say that. <laughs> so they, they went, to, they are now back. I know somebody was going to say that. But I died to what somebody will say because I want to make progress. I want to get to where God wants me to get to. Amen. I died to, and the person actually said it. <laughs> said it on pulpit. Go come me. Ah. Did I not get, did I not leave that place? Now, am I still there? The person who said, ah, eh, eh, when, when they left, when they left, we had, we had peace. As if I was troublesome. <laughs> eh, when they left, you know, all the dickiness and everybody will be having peace. That was when I came back. I knew such comment will come. But it didn't matter. Hey, yeah. may, may things like that not matter to you. Yeah. May, may it not derail you from your destiny. Yeah. May it not derail you. A lot of people have they, have they have walked into the bush and they can't navigate their path back because of arrogance, because of pride. So I became, I was, I became ordained uh, Dickiness. And my friend that we were dicking together without coming, say, You know, I'm a pastor. I can tell you to do anything. He has a problem of ego. Wow. But that doesn't matter to me. I said, Ah, yes, sir. Yes, yes, my pastor. <laughs> tell him, Come here. Go and do that. You know, I'm a pastor now. You don't need to say that. But even if you say that, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Does it? You know what? The only thing that can stop your journey is you. Nobody can stop your journey. You are the only one that can stop your journey. And how do you stop it? Stop obeying God. <laughs> stop walking. <laughs> stop walking. At every comment, don't walk again. At every disapproval, every correction, stop walking. <laughs> every criticism, stop walking. Then you are stopped. But in spite of criticism, keep walking. In spite of correction, keep walking. In spite of uh, disapproval, you keep walking. Keep walking. What matters is your work. What matters is your work. What will take you to where you are is your work because God will keep showing you light. God will keep instructing you. You know what the Lord told me? He said, go and apologize to your pastor and tell him that you are ready to be a dickiness now. You say no one ah she build a law and she came back. Uh, why should he, she be removed as a dickiness? This one that they put me back, it was not one month, it was not two months, so it was not it was almost a year. Wow. Oh yes. Such things we annoy people. Well, she be, she be, she's supposed to be restored back normally, not that you are now and giving her a time and then you ordain her back. I was ordained again. The, mm. <laughs> and that, 
God has to see that you are ready to go all the way. All the way. There are some things that cannot be committed into our hands because of the way we handle things of God. You must be ready to go all the way in spite of your ego. All the way. They must see that uh, your ego, your, uh, your reputation, your whatever means nothing to you. So the Lord instructed me, he said, go back and apologize to your pastor. My pastor was a bit tough to work with. So I was saying, God, how do I work with him? You know what the Lord told me? He said, walk in the spirit. <laughs> I said, you have to walk in the spirit all the time. Walk in the spirit means don't react carnally. Don't look at things carnally. Give a spirit attitude to everything that might offend you, that might be, be not, not be okay with you. He said, go and tell him you are sorry and that you are ready to be ordained and walk in the spirit. <laughs> and walk in the spirit. You would think it's because of pastor that God wants you to walk in the spirit. No, it's because of where you are going. You have to walk in the spirit until you get to God. So even in our marriages, a lot of problems will be solved if we agree to walk in the spirit. Your spouse is difficult. Can you walk in the spirit? Can you refuse to respond carnally? Can you walk in the this walking in the spirit? What about putting crow on church? Ah. Walk in the spirit in your home. Walk in the spirit in your relationship with your husband. Walk in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. But if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The one thing the flesh likes, sir, flesh likes justification. Flesh likes revenge. Do me, I do you, God, no vex. Flesh is comfortable with malice. Flesh is comfortable with unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is something that will stop you. Yeah. Ah, it will stop you. It will stop you. Spirits, after the order of God, they don't know anything called unforgiveness. It's not in their making. It's not in their arrangement. One thing that has affected marriage so much is unforgiveness. Wrongs of many years, they are piled up as a mountain and they stand in between husband and wife. So everything breaks down because of unforgiveness. There's nothing the man or the wife can do that can be okay again because he has wronged you and you have refused to allow it go. But you see, the Bible says, in malice, be children. You know, we're talking about the need for entrance into God's life. That except a man be converted and become like a little child, he cannot enter the kingdom. Kingdom, you cannot enter. Your relationship in your marriage can stop you from kingdom. Because the goal what is before you, what is at stake is our entrance into everlasting life. Entrance into eternal life. Things that will stop you when you are an adult, there is no entrance for you. Children are the ones that can enter easily. And what thing you know about a child is that a child is innocent when it comes to malice. 
In malice, be children. In understanding, be men. A man of understanding will forgive easily. He shows, when you say you have understanding, it shows in your ability to forgive quickly. You know, when we first got married, I told you I was very silly. I, my husband knew some things that I didn't know. So his ways used to make me feel funny. When we have a misunderstanding in the morning, in the evening, he'll just come as if nothing happened. Then me, I'm still like that. My mouth is still like that. <laughs> I, and he'll be surprised. Say, ah, are you still there? Say, Krumbe, Krumbe, Krumbe. That's, that's the place of death. Krumbe, Krumbe. Say, leave that place. Leave that place. It's a place of death. It's not a good place to stay. He'll be surprised that I'm still there. Hmm. He will be playing like a child. Uh, me, I'm a, I'm, I'm an ogbologbo. My mouth is like that. Mm. Are you okay? Mm. <laughs> Shake or see? Mm -mm. I was not child enough. So I was able to retain offense from morning till evening. Some people, uh -huh, some people for weeks. Some for months. Uh, yes. Ah, you die. You mama sick in it. There is nothing that eats the flesh like unforgiveness. It eats the flesh. So, becoming a child comes by revelation revelation of who our lord jesus is when he is revealed to you then you do what is revealed then you are converted give me matthew matthew where it says their ears are what's gross that they will not hear their eyes cannot see that they uh -huh. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time, they should see. Are you seeing something with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their eyes, with their heart and should be converted and I will heal them. What are we saying? You need to see, you need to hear so that you can understand. When you understand, it means you are ready to do. You, are, you, are, you cannot be convert, converted except you do what you understand. So conversion comes by doing. But before you can do, you must first hear, you must see. That is the reason for preaching and for teaching. Pre preaching and teaching, this weekend now, we have heard so much. And understanding has dawned on us in different ways, isn't it? So it, the next thing for us is to what? To do so that we can be converted. We can be converted. We can be converted. We can be converted. You can become a converted wife. You can become a converted husband. All you need is to see, to hear, and to understand. You see judgments. You see standards of God. You comprehend it. There are some things that we didn't know before that was wrong. And we indulge in them. And they make us the way we are. But God is looking for conversion. And the reason for the conversion is for entrance. Entrance, for progress. Entrance into life. Conversion. And all the conversion is to make you a child. Is to so what do you want A child, to make you a child. Conversion. When you are a child in marriage, you will enjoy yourselves. Your spouse will enjoy you. A child can be easily taught. 
You know, my husband used to tell me those days, I didn't understand him. He said, I want, I want a wife that is tender. Because you know me, I use money to learn law. So I know how to defend myself. And who the movie call? I know how to defend myself. So when he says something, I would look for an excuse. When he said, I, he said, I want a wife that is tender. I want a wife that I can cheat. Uh, uh, but didn't the Bible say that you should suffer yourself to be cheated? Hey, see, boy, Henry. You know, when you can be cheated, it means you don't have right. Somebody who has right is the one that cannot be cheated. And then, Miogba, Miogba. All the spirit of Miogba, God will remove from us. You can't do this to me. It's because you have right. And you will go to any length to defend your right. But the Bible does not allow us to defend our right. God is the one that gives you right. Your right is your authority in the spirit. And it takes you losing your right in the flesh to get your right, the authority in the spirit that God will give you. This is, sounds crazy. Abeko. Because where we are going to is very high. So you, my, my, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, yesterday God was telling us by prophecy that what we are used to is the abnormal way. Abnormal. He's a cherubim who was created beautiful, arranged perfectly. Bible called him perfect in beauty. Full of wisdom. Perfect in beauty. He turned and corrupted his wisdom. He called, give, give me, give me. This is the being that we are fighting. He has lied to us for ages. And we have come, we have settled in lies. <laughs> In the beginning, it was not so. You know, those people came to Jesus that uh, Moses gave them a bit, uh, a law that uh, if your wife, you want to put your wife away, you just give him, give her a bill of divorcement, and that is the end. And Jesus said, So what are you saying? Say, hey, yeah. In the beginning, it was not so. It was not so. That law that Moses gave you is because of your stiff nakedness. So they have to craft a law for you to my suit here that it will not kill you. Because they were too weak to obey the high commandments of God. The law of the beginning. They had been broken down. They can no longer obey. So when the law of the beginning is brought forth, people say, ah, he's tough, oh, he's tough, oh. It's because man has fallen. Man has degenerated. And an enemy did it. Son of man. Give me. An enemy did a bad work. So what God is doing to us is to make us unlearn lies. Unlearn lies. And learn the truth. The truth is that which is right. The right standard of God. When you learn it, you go up. You ascend. That The lie they told us made us to descend. And it's making us to be, to be corruptible. Give me that Ezekiel again, please. God is retraining us. From, we grew up with lies. We were framed with lies. And we believed a lie. A big lie. A big lie. It will take plenty, plenty preaching to purge us of the lie. That's why they need to talk to us. They need to preach to us so that our ears can hear, our eyes can see, understanding can come. Because our understanding has been darkened. Son of mine, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus hear the Lord God. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom. You know why you have to come to wisdom? <laughs> because they sold the false wisdom to us. Full of wisdom 
and perfect in beauty. Yes. This is the enemy that we are fighting. And the only way he can get you is to deceive you. To believe a lie that he has become. Hallelujah. That has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sadius, topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, and the emerald. And the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets, and of thy pipes, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that cover it. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. This man was not walking illegally when he was here. For him to be able to walk up and down the stones of fire, he was a legal being. He was walking in righteousness. Righteousness of that realm. He knew it and he was doing it. He was there. So he knows how to take you off your point, your spot. He has an advantage over you. Hey, I'd honestly hope I often were gone. He's the one that sold light to you. He right, sold right to you as righteous. And you are ready to defend that right. But he knows that it is a lie. It is anti-righteousness. That he knew. Because if he was doing right, he would not be able to walk, claiming his right. He would not be able to walk up and down the stones of fire. Thou art perfect in, uh, in thy ways. From the day thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Iniquity. Iniquity was found in him. Yes. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned, wherefore I will cast thee as profane, 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 out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. He sinned. There's a place that says he corrupted his wisdom. He corrupted his wisdom. So all the making, the way God made him, the way God weaved him, he was weaved in wisdom. He was so beautiful. Someone who is beautiful, which means at some point he was very meek. He was very lowly. He was meek. So when he turned, his meekness turned into pride and arrogance. When he turned, his gentleness turned to violence. And he came and deceived all nations. Because he turned, they cast him out of the mountain of God. So he knew what it takes to stay on the mountain of God. And he knew what it takes to remove a man from the mountain of God. So he taught us he's a wicked, wicked being. He is wicked. He came to teach us how they will drive us from the mountain of God. Everything God made him, he, he twisted it and then sold it to man. And man became blind. He sold it to man. He led man from the place of safety to the place of darkness and death. So he will tell you, Magbao, don't agree. You. Don't agree. You. If you agree, they will think you are a fool. If you agree, they will think you are weak. He knows that it is, it is not correct. It is not the right standard of God. That 
People who will abide in God's mountain, they are weak people. They are people who can easily agree. Easy to be entreated. There are people who should be, who can be cheated and they will not fight for their right. He knows it. That's why he's uncomfortable. He doesn't want you to know. And when you know, he stands before you. Are you sure? Are you sure? Have you ever been in conversation with spirits before? All of us converse, converse with spirits, John. We all converse with spirits. How do we converse with thoughts? You know how to overcome them? Take the right thoughts. And the right thoughts will not come to you except your eyes are open. Your ears will hear what is correct. That's the reason for preaching righteousness. Righteousness, your knowledge of what is right will help you to nip the devil. You will not say, ah, Agbaya, Agbaya. Is this, is this, this is what you became that made them to drive you. You now want to teach me so that they can drive me. I refuse to be driven. I won't take your thought. Husband and wife, Satan comes in between them to separate them all the time. He will give you a wrong picture of your husband and tell you to be thinking. He will malign your spouse to you. We all have shortcomings and we all have weaknesses. But that doesn't make us bad or evil. Amen. It doesn't make us bad or evil. We have shortcomings. My husband has shortcomings. Then the devil will come and take your spouse's shortcoming and begin to magnify you to you. But can't you see how he is? Can't you see the way he behaved? He is not good. Though. He's not good. Though. He, he, he did it intentionally. He, even if he did it intentionally, it's because he has shortcoming. It's because he's not perfect. He just needs strength. He just, there was a time the Lord had to tell me. He said, your husband is a good man. God had, yes. He said, your husband is a good man. He said, don't mind his shortcomings. Don't focus on his shortcomings. God had to bring the correct sense with which I, because the devil will keep painting him. He did it again and did it again. I don't you think he's not good? Don't you think he doesn't love you? That's Satan for you. He does, if he loves you, would he have done that? And then you begin to compare your spouse with another spouse. This person's spouse can never do this song. He's Satan. You, meanwhile, you don't know what the other person is, take, is putting up with, with, with his spouse or with her spouse. You don't know it. But the devil will focus on you to make sure that he takes you. What is after is beyond your marriage. Oh. Your marriage will mess you up if it breaks. There's no doubt about that. Your marriage can even make you to, to miss kingdom. Because you might not be able to bring yourself together again. A lot of people who suffer divorce, they suffer heart, uh, heartache that it takes a lot of effort for God to heal them. To heal them. Heartache. And you see, whether somebody offended you or did not offend you does not mean that uh, God will excuse you for, for unforgiveness. So. Satan wants you to stay in unforgiveness so that he can deal with you. He can finish you. Is it just accusing? Deal with you. A, a brother was saying, a minister of God was giving a testimony. He went to preach somewhere. And uh, he now gave um, a call for those who are sick in their bodies to come out for healing. So these people came and he was praying for them one after the other. Praying for them one after the other. Until he got to the turn of this woman. As, she, as he laid his hands on, on her, the Lord told him, don't bother to pray for her. That sickness in her body is going to kill her. He said, don't bother. He said, take your hands off. You know, Hagen, it happens to Hagen a lot of times. If you pray for somebody who is sick, the Lord said, he's not going to get healed. He's going to die. He said, he will put his hand. The Lord will take his hand. He will put his hand. The Lord will take his hand. He said, he's going to die. He's going home. 
He has been waiting for him for 30 years to live right. He has not lived right. This is the only time he has lived right in 30 years. It's the best time for him to come home. And uh, Oigi will say, that sure beats going to hell. At least two people like that. One for 15 years. He didn't stay two weeks righteous for 15 years. He was married. He would leave his wife, go to another, another woman's house and be living there. And then he would repent and be okay for maybe for one week. After one week, he goes back again. And the Lord was patiently waiting for him to. So the moment he just became right like that. Lord again, Tete Mamula. God is very loving, no? So again, he said, it just beat going to hell. So this woman, he told her, I said, ah, my sister. So he was asking the Lord, why now? Why the Bible says this, because cutting Bible for the Lord. Uh, ask her about the woman that took her husband. What is her heart state towards that woman? You know the way God taught her too high. That's why you see, we need to be raised and raised and raised to be able to take those high thoughts. So the, the, the preaching of Christ will raise you from carnality so that you can be able to relate with higher thoughts. The thoughts of God are high. He is who he is. And he's not willing to compromise it for your own circumstances and situations. So the brother now asked, Egbo, what happened to the woman that took your husband? Say, ah, aye oleda, tiema bajeni, ah, she broke down, was crying, aye oleda, ah, I suffered. My children suffer, which is true. She took her husband. The husband neglected them. She suffered raising the children alone. Is that not painful? Very painful. Very undoing. She wept pain. You know your 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 home that you were planning for, having dreams of how your children will grow up, your husband will be there, and this woman just came and broke your joy. Said, "Aye, Olenda, Kole Kure, she will not die well. It can never be okay with her." Ah, eh, eh, eh. And the Lord said, "Well, let her Say, but you will die mm, if you cannot forgive her." Yes. So that sickness in your body will kill you. What the woman did, was it correct? It was not right. But you see, the law of God cannot change. It's a law in the realm of the spirit. Because all the things they did to her, we did worse than that to God. <laughs> eh? When we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's the standard. He did what? <laughs> for when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Ungodly. C continue. Continue. For scarcely for a righteous man we won't die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. It's not for a good man now. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The topic is becoming the garden of love. This is the definition of love. We need to learn, learn who God is. He said, I pray that your love may abound yet much more and more in knowledge and all judgment. In all judgment. All judge Why we are limited in loving is because we lack knowledge and we lack judgment. So when the right judgment, the judgment of God, they are very high. High, high, high judgment. 
So you cannot become the, a guardian of love if you are not increasing in knowledge and in judgment. This is the demonstration of the love of God. When we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So for scarcely, let's go back to it. Pastor, sir, this is we are talking. They are not story, story. Oh. These are requirements that will be required for us, from us, in days to come. Get yourself set. Put your, mind, your gear in neutral so that you can, you can be ready to engage the gear when judgment comes. This is who God is. And by doing this, I will become like him. This is requirement. If God has done it, he's requiring it from us. Abishabi will want to be like him. Uh, this is how to be like This is who he is. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why we were yet, your life, <laughs> I remember those days when I had a lot of, we are few now, a lot of them have been married and they've gone. A lot of brethren in the house and they were full of infirmities and shortcomings. And then they were now tasking my pocket in spite of their infirmities and shortcomings. And I was now thinking, ah, God, ah, money that was coming to us then was very small. And we had to feed a whole household. So I started grumbling in my heart. There was no room for savings. Money that you will be saving, you now be calculating. At times when I calculate how much we spend on, on uh, food in a month, my heart will start beating. Boo, 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 boo. I say, ha, mama, pare, one more day. So in my heart, I was grumbling that this demand is too much. This, and the Lord said to me, lay your life down for them. I say, hey, lay my life down for who? This brethren. I said, go and bring good ones. I said, these ones don't deserve my life. Oh. Go and bring good ones and I will lay my life down for them. These ones don't deserve my life. My life for these ones which full of infirmities, shortcomings. And, mm, I can't lay my life down for them. So the Lord just answered me. Said, hey, there you are. There you are. Christ died for the ungodly. He gave his life. He said, that is the standard. He said, that's the standard. Lay your life down for them. He said, allow them to use you. That I remember that. He said, allow them to use you. He said, lay your life down. He said, lie on the floor. Let them use you, work on you. Use you to get to where they are going. That was tough. He said, lie on the floor. You know, those of you who are ambitious for ministry. That is the standard of ministry. Oh. Uh. You think you will look ministry? If you want to do true ministry, he said, lie on the floor. Let them walk on you and use you to get to where they are going. I said, eh, did I offend? Why must I be the one on the floor and then they will be going to where they are going? I didn't know that we were going together even though I was on the floor. It took me time to know that as they were walking on me, even me, I was joining. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought I, I offended. Why would I be on the floor motionless and people will be stepping on me and they are going to where they are going? I didn't know that that's lying on the floor. I was journeying if I faster than them. <laughs> Thou will teach me the path of life in your presence. Is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forever. Majority of the anointing I came into, I came into it by the brethren. Forbearing the brethren. Suffering long with the brethren. That was my fasting. Amen. When 
I've done endurance, I get up and I get anointed. People can fast, but they cannot bear at all. They are the same, and they are fasting. Lord, you come. You just move. How do you move? Obey. Take a step of obedience. You will outrun somebody who is fasting and is not obeying. In your presence, the part of life takes me to your presence. At the right hand are pleasures forevermore. I come to your presence and I come to your right hand by you showing me. I don't know it. That's one thing you must tell yourself. I don't know. Lord, you have to help me. What is the correct judgment in this situation? What is the right judgment in this situation? And like I said when I started, you need meekness. You need meekness to make progress with God. Because those who follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth, they are the ones that will stand on the hill, on the mountain with the Father's name on their foreheads. And the part of the, of the, the Lamb, Kokishe, part of the lion, no? It's not the part of the leopard. It's not the part of the goat. The part of the lamb is a very low, 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 low. So for you to follow the lamb to the end, ah, <laughs> it is lowliness upon lowliness. Meekness. Of, you will take a wrong turn if you don't agree to go lower and lower and lower and lower. You will always take a wrong turn you will take a wrong turn if you are not weak, if you are not meek. You will take a wrong turn. It takes meekness to be able to yield to the Lord. Because at times, some obedience are humiliating. To flesh. To the flesh, you know. That's why it's humiliating to you. But when your flesh is humiliated, it's good. Though. The flesh wants to die because flesh shall die. Flesh must die. Flesh must die. Flesh profited nothing. There's no profit in flesh. My flesh, my ego, there's no profit. You don't profit in eternal life. You don't profit in everlasting life with ego. It takes me humility. Humility to obey God. When God says, go and apologize that you are sorry, your flesh has to die for you to be able to take that to obedience. Because a lot of things we have, eh, so they will not think that they are the ones who are wrong, who are right now. Eh, they are, they will, everybody will not think I have, have always been wrong. I am wrong. Everybody will not think, eh, 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 everybody, 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 until that commandment slips of you. What if I am wrong? Why can't I be wrong? Why should I not be wrong? Am I God? I'm not God, so I can be wrong. I can be wrong. I'm not God. And it takes humility, contriteness. The Lord is close to them who have a contrite heart and a humble spirit. Give me that uh, um, Isaiah. No. The Lord, he dwells in the high and lofty place, and with them, the, with them that are lowly, and to revive the spirit of the humble, and uh, 57. Uh, Isaiah 57. For thus here the high and lofty one that habited, that inhabited eternity, inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit. I dwell in the high and holy place. I also dwell with people who have uh, with him also. His dwelling place is high and holy, but he also dwells with people with a contrite and a humble spirit. You want God to dwell in your house. This is the heart that invites God. 
A lot of houses are void of God's presence. And people don't know. They are on their own. They are alone. The Lord told me, before we started, I think I've shared this before, before we started having the visitation of angels in the ministry on the increase some years ago, I was in the room. The Lord just came to the room and said to me, we want to start coming down. We want to start coming down. We don't want any more quarrels in this house. Say, so I want to start coming down. So you can create a condition in your house that will drive angels and drive spirits. It's not as if maybe we quarrel, we fight, but we have disagreements. And at times it can, be, it can result to sharp argument. That's normal between husband and wife. But after some time, it will be abnormal for you. When light comes, it becomes abnormal. What is normal now will must become abnormal in your home. Say, ah, we are human beings. Now, no, they expect you to journey beyond the level of human beings. We learned the abnormal. Now we will learn the normal. The normal is righteousness. The normal is humility. The normal is meekness. The normal is lowliness. So the, I just said, we want to start coming down. We don't want any more arguments in this house. I said, ah. Eh, yeah, lady. So I now went to tell my husband. I said, see what uh, I heard. Oh, a, a, a being actually walked into the room to tell me that. He said, we want to start coming down. We want to start coming down. And the only thing that will prevent us is arguments between husband and wife. So I went to tell my husband, I said, I, see what they told me. He said, eh. I said, how come it's me that they came to tell? Uh, he said, they know who can argue now. <laughs> so they came to tell the one that can argue. I said, they didn't come and tell you. He said, no. I said, oh, she gave me no Ah, uh, He said, they know who they will meet now. So I started being conscious. The Lord, I didn't perfect it in one day. A lot of visitations, a lot of instructions, corrections, rebuke from the Spirit of God was helping me until a major visitation came to me that made me, in fact, you can't catch me. If, if we ask, I that, but when he, how do we do it? He said, this is the way I said, are you sure? Why don't you look at it? If he insists, I'll just leave him. I face my destiny. Let it not be me that will be driving angels from the house. Yeah. Eh? Would you, do you want to be the one that will drive God? Oh. That will drive angels? Oh. Uh, so, for you not to drive them, your right is very strong, but you can let go of it so that you can allow for presence in your house. Yeah. You see, when we have this understanding, it will be easy for us to let go of things. The reason we don't let go of things is because we don't see anything that is stronger or better than those things that we are holding on to. You hold on to your ego, it, it will kill you. Hold on to your right, you don't gain anything from it. You are right, oh, and you are correct, and you hold on to it. Eh, you say, Peleo, means a right. Means a right. We take our leave, oh, we are going. We don't dwell in places, we don't dwell with people who have right. We dwell with the meek and the lowly. Between husband and wife, somebody is always right. And the other one is always, I was like that. She, you know, I, I'm a woman of like passion. <laughs> when I say, I said, why did you do that? I say, I'm sorry. Hey, you're sorry. And then he will do something. I say, hey, you get angry. Say, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Please forgive me. Forgive me, I'm sorry. He will always say it. Then I discovered that he was joining at a terrific rate into the spirit. And me, I was on the same spot. And I said, ah, sweetheart, are you leaving your wife alone? Look at the way you are going far, far into the spirit. He said, ah, when you are always right, Inko. He said, keep being right. I will keep being wrong. And I will be moving into the spirit. Eh? Do you still want to be right? No. Eh? 
Do you see want to be right? Let me see your hand up if you want to be right. <laughs> you know, a contrite heart is a heart that takes the blame. That's the meaning of a contrite heart. Oh, the heart that takes the blame. I'm sorry, forgive me. I'm the one who is wrong. He said, God dwells with people like that. But some people, when they are obviously wrong, you can't convince them that they are wrong. They will fight it. They will argue it. They will explain it away. They will excuse it. At the end of the day, they say, you warn me, you are the one that made me to go wrong. They will twist it because they should never be wrong. Such people are not easy to relate with. If you have such a person as a spouse, you'll be frustrated. He's, she's never wrong. He's never wrong. So my husband said, ah. I said, ah, you are leaving me behind. You are just Johnny, 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 Johnny. He said, ah, when you are always writing, call. He said, keep being right. I said, ah, you didn't tell me that that will slow me down. He said, ah, keep being right. I will keep being wrong. But I'll be going into God. Because God dwells with them of, who are of a contrite heart and a humble spirit. You see, understanding is coming to you now. You can easily let go of things. Even between friends, between brethren. When you see a, 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 a brother or a sister who is hard and tough, will never cook. That person is marking time on one spot. He's going nowhere. You are not Johnny. Going nowhere, you just be marking time. On your marks. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, right, left, right, left. Nobody will ever give you command. Forward march. There is no forward march. So the people who are forbearing you, they are already doing forward march. They are marching forward. You are always right. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Then another person comes and says, Mioba, Mioba. Say, okay, Motiba. That one does forward match. And you, you are sick here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to escape. I want you to escape out of your snares. Out mm. of the snares that the adversary has put you under. I want you to escape. I want you to come out of them. Come out of them. Come Leave. out of your snare. Come out of your snares that the adversary has placed you in. Come out of it. Come out of it. For you see, traditions are snares. Philosophy traditions. Are Can snares. you imagine? Traditions of men that you have been raised with. Formations. Those things your parents even taught you. Those things that you learned from your colleagues. How they do it out there is a snare that would not make you move forward. Is mm. a snare that would not make you move forward. For many are held down. Many are held down. Many are held mm. down from a Ascending. Many ascending. Are ascending. But I want you to escape. I want you to escape. I want you to escape by a higher force. By a higher force of righteousness. I want you to escape by obeying righteousness. Such that you can be a servant of righteousness. Be a servant of righteousness. Become a servant of righteousness. And as you serve righteousness, you will escape. You will escape. You will escape out of the snare that the adversary has placed you in. You will escape out of that snare. You will escape out of that, that snare. You will become free. You will become free to serve God. You will become free to serve God. You will no longer serve sin, but you will become a servant of God. You will become a servant of, the, of God. You will become a servant of God even in your day-to-day -day activities, in your, re, your relationships. You will become a servant of God. For becoming a servant of God is not esoteric. It's not esoteric. It's in these things. It's in these things. It's in how you converse. It's in your response to one 
one another. It's in your response. It's in your, your, your response. Even from your heart to your mouth. It's in your response. It's in your response. I want to make servants of righteousness. I servants. Want to make servants of righteousness. Men who will obey righteousness. And through obedience of righteousness, they will come into the end. They will come into the end, which is even everlasting life. Then they will even come into the throne of glory. I want to raise servants of righteousness. Become servants of righteousness. As you yield to obe obedience to righteousness, you will become a servant. A servant of righteousness. A servant who is free from the snare of the fowler, saith the Lord. The snare of the fowler. You know the fowler? Those who catch birds, they set, they, uh, they set nets, snare for the fowl. The, the, the only way to escape Satan is by going low. Fly below his snare. Fly below his radar. Come down. He's always setting snares for us every, every time. Every time. He doesn't rest. Too. And he comes in a subtle way. He comes like a friend. He comes like a sympathizer. Can you imagine? See the way they have treated you. Have they treated you well? As if he loves you. He hates you. As a friend. Always sympathizing with you. He's always on your side. <laughs> He's on your side to pitch you against God. He wants you to come to his side by taking his standards, his thoughts. His thoughts are thoughts that lead to death. Thoughts of death that he brings. And because we don't have understanding, we don't have judgment. That's why judgment must be given to us. Amen. Judgment must be given to us. According to the prophecy of Daniel, give me that prophecy of Daniel, that the enemy, the, 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 the enemy was prevailing. It was even overcoming the saints. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. This is the solution. Judgment, knowledge. Knowledge. If you fast and pray and you are not giving knowledge, you are not going anywhere. I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints. Ah, and made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Pastor, he was prevailing against them. They are saints. They are saints, but they were ignorant. He prevailed against them until the ancient of days came. This is the days where the ancient of days is arising. Amen. Judgments of everlasting life. Hallelujah. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Amen. Judgment. Judgment was given. Now, you can't take this judgment if you have not obeyed Christ. The, that's what I'm telling you. This judgment, I'm talking about high judgment that will make you look like a mad person. You look so weak. They didn't know that is wisdom of escape. High wisdom of escape. When you have done Christ, you have obeyed Christ, your understanding has been quickened to a level. You have been able to escape the world and the standards of the world by the obedience to the doctrines of Christ. Your heart has become tender. You have acquired the heart of flesh. That heart of flesh can take further judgment because the judgment that is to come after you acquire the heart of flesh, it's very high. That's why they said a carnal man cannot receive it. A carnal man cannot receive your money. Ah, hey, hey, hey. That's a carnal man. But somebody who has used Christ, you have been used to some kind of obedience that is different from what you were raised with. You have been weaned from worldly standards to a large extent. So when they bring further judgment, 
you can you can go further. He said the, the, he prevailed he prevailed against the horn, prevailed against them, against the saints, because the saints lack judgment. So judgment is our weapon of warfare. Judgment was given. The, the ancient of days came. This is the time of the ancient of days. Where he will give judgment. High judgment. Higher than what you learned in Christ. Higher. And when you say something is higher in the realm of God, it is high holiness, high lowliness, high meekness. Because the, 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 the realms of the spirit, according to my husband, they are calibrated in humility. The higher you go, the meeker you become. You don't know meekness yet. Oh. Some of us, we are yet to perfect the meekness of Christ. Before, because when those judgments, those judgments, all of them will be calibrated in meekness and humility and lowliness. That is end of story. End of story. Of those judgments, the judgment that will make you to possess the kingdom. What did the Bible say? Except a man be converted and become like a little child. Be converted and become like a little child. He cannot enter the kingdom. He cannot possess the kingdom. So those judgments are coming for our conversion. They come to convert us, to make us little, to make us small, so that we don't collide with the gate of the kingdom. This is the gate of the kingdom. And I'm like this. And I want to enter. What will happen? I'll collide with it. I'm too high for it. So judgments have to come to me that I will obey, that will reduce me, reduce me, reduce me, reduce me, make me smaller until I come under and I can enter. It is by judgment that you escape Satan. Amen. Judgment said he prevailed against the saints until judgment came. So when you see judgment, standards of righteousness, high righteousness, they will be ministered to you. But you must have finished the righteousness that is in Christ. That will give you a heart of flesh. Judgment that is in Christ. You can imagine when saints come to this place and they are inside marriage. That is heaven on earth, pastor. Heaven has come to earth because human beings have embodied the judgments of heaven. High judgment. They have obeyed. They have agreed with it. They have made covenant with judgments of heaven. With standards of heaven. They have agreed with it. Husband is lowly. Wife is lowly. Husband is forgiving. Wife, wife is forgiving. You quarrel like this, this and the next time you are playing. I, 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 there's this illustration I always give about two children that uh, after prayer meeting, they were playing. First, Baba. Pastor Tyrus' daughter, and um, Godman, Pastor Kenson, the two of them were playing. Godman now pushed Ifeti Baba. Ifeti Baba fell and hit her head. And she started crying. I walked by like, I said, ah, Godman, why did you do this? Godman, hey, you shouldn't have done it. Ifeti Baba just saw us. She just got on and said, Godman, come, let go. He pushed her. She fell and hit her head. And we adults, we were scolding Godman. Godman, why stop that? Why are you doing that? You should have done that. Why did you push her? He first of all, just got up. To our amazement. She just got up. Say, Godman, come on, come. Let's go. Let's go. She saw that we were scolding him. She got up. Say, come on, come. Let's go. Let's go and continue our play. Someone that was crying on the floor just now, just now. Because God man pushed her. I want it that bad you.
Ha. May God help us to be converted. Me, I'm, I've not gotten to that level, dear. They, they be here. Me, you tell me, you go to Paro. God help us, oh. God help us, oh. Including me, oh. Ah. Hey, oh. I want to be like Jesus. It's not by singing, no. Become nothing. Hmm. Become nothing. Become nothing. Become nothing. Become nothing. Become eating. Not being seen. Become not seen. Oh, Alamia Shuprani Havabia Krebelibra to Miar Gatani Argadedi. Ajitia Baniar Gabavunia Avii. Hell even high. For you see, the adversary has pumped you up. The hey. adversary has pumped you up with his pipe. He has pumped man up. The adversary has pumped men up. For men are high. Men are high. Men are high. And men do not know the way of wisdom. Men do not know the way of, way of wisdom. Who is the way of the Lord? Who, which is the way of the Lord in lowliness. For the way of wisdom is in lowliness. The way of wisdom is in lowliness. Is in lowliness. We want to reduce you. We want to reduce you. We want to reduce you until you become nothing. Until Hell. you become nothing. For you are still something. You, you are, are still, still something. something. Become nothing. Hey, become nothing. God, I mess become you. Become nothing. Become nothing. Become not seen. Disappear. Disappear. Don't be seen at all. Don't be seen at all. For it is who that is not being seen that is like us. That is like us. For when he searched and he even looked to see who is upon the throne, he was as a stone. He was just as a stone. He was just as a stone. He was not, he, he was not, he was just as a stone. He was nothing. He was nothing. He was nothing. For you see that who is on the throne, even your father who is on the throne, he is nothing. He is nothing. He is nothing. He is nothing. That is why he is the greatest. That is why he is the greatest. For he is also the least. He is the least is the least of them all. Is the least of them all. So we want you to become least. Become mm. least. Become least. Become mm. little. Have you not heard that a little one will be the one that will lead them? A little one will be the one that will lead them. I am raising a company. I am raising a company of least men. A company of little men. A company of little men. A people. A, a, a company of people who walk with the light of the lamp. With the light of the lamp. For you see that lamp is a little one. Is a little huh. one. Is a little one. On who mm. is nothing? Who is nothing in himself? Who is nothing in himself? For you see, many, many times you are, you allow that which the adversary do in you to to to, to, to become how you see yourself. To yeah. Become how you see yourself. Yeah. But I want you to take no longer thought concerning that. Remove mm. it from your sense. Reject it. Reject it. For that is not your true identity in me. That is not your true identity in me. Hell. Come into your true identity in me. For that which I see in you, as I know you, is to be least. I want you to know. I want you to know that I know you as being least. Come into that realm of knowledge of being least. Come into that realm of knowledge of being least, of being little. For that is where I know you. That is where I will know you. That is where I will know you. I want to know you in a new realm. In, in a new realm of the least. 
in the new realm of the little ones, in the realm of the little ones, mm. come into that realm of little ones, into that fellowship of the little ones, enter into the fellowship of little ones, into that fellowship of the little ones. Oh, me a jar gabaru be a jar jar ge, e jar gami ar go boba ni a bab, e bi bab, e bi ni ma ni ma di bab, e mi baba, e mi ni baba, e mi ni baba, baba ma wani baba, e mi ni baba to a list, e mi ni baba to a list, ha mi ni ma ni baba to list, ha bi ni ma ni baba to list, ha bi ni ma ni ma ni baba to list. Have never about Balista, have Lista, have a I'm a list, I'm I'm Haba, I'm Haba list, I'm Haba the list, I'm Haba the list one, I'm Haba the list one, I'm Haba list, I'm the Haba the list one, I'm Haba the little one, I'm your father the little one, I'm your father the little one. Come into our fellowship, come into the fellowship that I have with my son, come into that fellowship that I have with my son, for it is a fellowship of little ones. Say, the Lord. Fellowship of the little ones. So a lot of us cannot come into fellowship with the lamb. We can't fellowship with him. We can't fellowship. He said, our he said, that which we have heard, which we have seen, that which we have seen, that which was in the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have heard, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and declare unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. What we are seeing and we are hearing, we need to declare it unto you. And what is the reason? So that you can have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And they are telling us that Fellows of that order are little. Fellows of that. How can you mingle with a lamb when you are a tiger? Oh, my buje, you will bite, the, you will tear the lamb into pieces. So they can't bring you into their fellowship except they convert you. You have to be converted. They have to show you their own laws. They are laws that make you little. They are lost, will remove your teeth. They will remove your claws that can, that can be harmful. You know, they said well, one of the things our Lord Jesus Christ became is became, he became harmless. He became harmless. You see, when you are not high, when you are not big, you cannot be harmful. That girl that stood up does not think anything of herself. Herself, she has no ego that was, that was a bruised when they pushed her down she didn't think a hey, me a hey, me a do a me me is it me that you pushed her she didn't have it so she was able to be quick to forgive says in malice be children what makes us not to be children is our a lot of dirty things inside us ego self bigness who you are i am that i am You are the I am that I am. You have reputation, oh, that is reaching heaven. You have CV that is reaching heaven. So when you are offended, it is those reputation that is offended. It is the ego that is offended. If they push you down now, my brother, what will be offended in you is a maybe Moshe why. The things that can come to your mind, if not that, we come to church together. Would you have been able to do that to me? If not that we are hearing this same word. Have you heard yourself saying that? <laughs> if not for this word that we are hearing. What can you, are you in my category? Are you in my level? Are you in my state? Those were things the Lord warned me about. He warned me seriously. He said, don't let me hear you talk about those your mates. Don't let me hear you talk about them. Because un unknowingly, the thoughts of where your mates are yeah. will come to you when a young person insults you. And as a pastor, you will be insulted, yeah. offended by younger ones. They don't know better. Yeah. So at times it will just come to me, eh, if I have become a judge, 
like my mates who have been judges for more than 10 years, can they walk into judge's office and insult the judge? And the Lord said, die to that. Put that under. Come under. Come under. Come. He said, the Lord will tell me, take the fall. Take the fall. Take the fall. Not because of them. Because of life. So you can enter into life. Any CV you have, better clean it off. Be as if you don't have anything. Anything. That's the only way. That is the way. Those are the things that help us to forgive easily. And then make progress. The Lord said, don't let me hear you talk about those things. Your classmates are professor. So what? They are judges. So what? Some of them are governors. Some of them are ministers. He said, he wants you. You are nothing. No. You are not. And don't relate. Don't use that to relate with my people. Don't use that. Remove it. And wear the cloak of nobody. So that you can be insulted easily. And you can forgive easily. What prevents us from forgiving easily are those things. Too much high-mindedness, haughtiness of spirit. You are so high. Hey, me. Hey, me. Me. She said that to me. When you hear that, tell yourself, so who exactly are you? Who exactly are you? Tell yourself, who exactly am I? I am a nobody. I am a nobody. Keep telling yourself, it will help you. I'm telling you, you are fighting for your life, oh. You are fighting for your life. Fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto you have been called. This is where the fight is. Fighting contradictions of Satan's standards. Satan's exaltations. Get judgment. God will visit you with judgment, with understanding. You, he said, you down by your laws has made me wiser than my enemies. What I need against my enemies is wisdom. Because my enemy is using wiles, corrupted wisdom against me. And I don't know it. He sold it to me. I believe I, I grew up to, meet, to, to, to know it. It was a conversation we grew up with. True or false? Those days, parents used to drive their children back. When somebody beats them and the child cries to the house, they'll say, eh? They will beat their child and say, go back and beat your own. <laughs> Is that not true? Even your older ones, when you were growing, somebody beats you and you start crying. Say, eh, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Are you a fool? Go back and beat your own. Yeah, beat your own. Beat your own. And so we grew up with beating your own. <laughs> Those were conversations that, that raised us. You know, because what you do over and over, you become it. So we have used those laws, those judgments over and over, not knowing that it was Satan that sold it to us. <laughs> we grew up in it. So God has to crack it down by introducing the correct judgment to you and then you now do it over and over and then you become something different from your formation. And that's something different is to make you low. You make you low. They beat you, you cry. And you cannot beat your own back. And you know, we can cultivate, we can culture our children like that. To be, to be weak. We don't like weakness. You want to have a child that is tough, that can face his colleagues and everything and everything. But to teach a child to be weak. Sure you understand? Yes. I remember my, my daughter in secondary school. She had people, some classmates that can bully. They will bully. 
she will start crying. Say, mommy, I could not, I could not talk back. She will cry. Say, it's painful. It's painful. It's painful. But with time, she grew above it. One day, she made a mistake. She said something back to somebody. She felt so bad. Say, mommy, ah, I, I, I did something wrong. I said, what did you say? She said, somebody said something, and I, and I just said, Not, nothing so bad, though. But the fact that she replied was painful to her because of culturing. Culturing. Some, some days ago, we were talking. Say, ah, that thing that you said, though, that God is still helping me, that there's nothing somebody can do to me that, that I will respond. But in my heart, I will be feeling somehow about the person. Say, I'm still praying for that God will help me in that area. So that my heart will still be okay with somebody that offends me. Not that I will respond. Say, mm, I won't respond. Say, but my heart will be feeling something. It's culturing. culturing. We were cultured wrongly. Yeah. Now, those of us who are about, they are just parents now. Yeah. We are knowing the truth. Yeah. We know how to culture our children. Yeah. You, you cannot, with this level of light that you have, yeah. afford to raise children who will be fighting back. No. That is, that is, is not acceptable for you now. We were raised in ignorance. We, now we have light, we raise children differently. We raise them with right standard, light standards. Light, we raise children that will be meek, children that will be respectful, children that will be gentle, children that cannot keep malice. It is parents that treat children malice. Because when your child does something wrong, he goes, he calls my mommy, he says, I'm not talking to you. He, the child has forgotten what happened. The parent will now remind the child, we are still fighting. That thing you did in the morning, we are still fighting. The child has forgotten. The child has forgotten. It is parents that teach them how to keep malice, how to remember faults and offense. We are the ones that culture them. Because children don't remember. Children don't remember. They don't remember. So those of us that are still raising children now, a task is in your hand to raise children of light. Amen. And you just, just raise them by talking to them. They must see you doing it. They must see you doing it. They must see you making up easily with somebody who has offended you. They must see you making up with your with yourselves in the house. In fact, one thing we should not even do before our children is to quarrel. We should never quarrel before our children. We should be disciplined enough. You we should be disciplined enough that no matter how angry you are, you should be able to enter the room to sort it out. And you come back laughing as if nothing has happened. Your children are watching you. It is what they see you do. That they will do. Say, ah, Junior, make sure you don't keep mali so. And they see you, their daddy greets you, say, leave me alone. They say, Junior, make sure you remain a child. You hear? In mali, be a child. You must always be a child. And they see you displaying your bonga character. Children learn more by what they see than what you tell them. Than what you tell them. They, you don't know they are watching you. One day my daughter, she watched a film of a woman that, that is so cantankerous. Very cantankerous, very arrogant, very proud. When she sees poor people, she'll say, ah, am I the one that said you should be poor? Am I the one that did this? Am I the? So they were laughing. She now said, ah, mommy, see this woman, I watched this film. This woman was just so cantankerous. Say, I was just saying, ah, my mommy will not do this. So that if it is you, you see a poor person, you will give them food, you will give them money. I looked at her. Ah, how did she come to that conclusion? Say, I just said, ah, my mommy will not do like this. My mommy would never do that. I know you. If it is you now, you see somebody who is poor, you will not abuse them. You said you will give them money, you will give them food. She was very young when she was still in secondary school when she said that to me. 
They are saying what you are saying, what you are doing, more than what you are saying. They are saying it more than what you are saying. She, 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 she walked a little and she wants to come home. And she said, Mommy, I want to buy something for Pastor Mika. I want to buy something for Mommy Leah. I want to buy something. I should say, My pastor, I buy for my pastor. What should I buy for my pastor? Pastor Taiwo, Pastor Papo, Pastor this one. I was just laughing. I said, You are a student. She had gone to the shop. She would call me. Is this one looking for Pastor Mika? Is this one looking for Mommy Lilian? Is this one looking for this one? Say, Oh, Bobo's birthday. Yeah, 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 I'm buying something. Oh, Jessica turned 18. I'll buy. Ah, ah. I was just looking at her. I was laughing because I was seeing myself. I didn't teach her. I didn't tell her. It came out from her. She, and she took it so seriously. This one, how, where, eh, ah, ah, papo, ah, papo, thank God for papo in my life. I must buy something for him. <laughs> I started laughing. I was just looking at her, I was laughing. I didn't sit her down that you see, you must honor your pastors, you must appreciate them. I didn't tell her that. <laughs> Conversation. You culture children with conversation more than with mouth. If you say something with your mouth and you do contrary, they know. They pick it and they will do exactly. Have you ever seen children copy parents? They go and carry wig and put wig on their head. Have you ever seen children do that? They carry your lipstick and put it on their mouth. That's what they see you doing. So if you do, if you conduct your life in righteousness, they will follow suit. They will copy it. They will copy it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What am I saying? In conclusion, conversation is key. Conversation, what you do with the light, you must get light. That's why we pray. Those of us, I see pray oh, that my eyes will be enlightened. Pray always that God will enlighten your eyes. That you will see the right conversation. He said, I go to my father. The world seeth me no more. But you will see me. You will see me. Because I live, you will live also. You need to see him that has gone to his father. You need to see, what are you seeing? You are seeing the arrangement of his person. You are seeing the laws that made him up. You must see him. If you are not seeing, you are not joining. You know? So pray that you see him. See him as Christ. See him as our everlasting father. You see him as God. It's a gradual progression. Keep seeing him. Keep seeing. Keep seeing. Open my eyes, Lord, that I may see you. Let me see you. Let me know you. Let me see you. Because when I see you, what will make me live is because I live after what I'm seeing. Then I will live. I will see what I'm seeing. I will see the laws that make him to live. The laws of life is what I will see. I will see those laws and I will obey the laws and I will live. I will live. I will live. I will live. I'll be quickened. I'll be quickened. I'll be powerful. I'll be formidable. I will escape Satan. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. New direction for your prayers. Direction for your prayers. Mm. Direction for your prayers. Mm. Direction for your prayers. For you <laughs> see, some have been praying wrongly. Some have been praying wrongly. Uh -huh. I'm showing you how to pray. Uh -huh. I'm showing you how to pray. Uh -huh. I'm telling you what to pray. What you need to, to pray. pray to see. You ha. need to pray that you are, are torn from your blindness. For you cannot pray accurately.
accurately when you are even yet blind. I want uh -huh. to open your eyes so that you can even pray again accurately. Opening my eyes is strong in the heavens. When you pray for your hmm. sight to be open, to be open, strong. it is strong in our ears. It is strong in our ears. For many uh -huh. are blind, many are blind, many are blind, seen. many uh -huh. are blind and are not seen. God, when God, we have mercy. Hear prayers concerning our. Our, uh, that eyes of men should be open. Eyes of understanding should be open. We answer it. We answer it. We answer it. We answer it. I'm telling you what to pray. Let it be in your prayers. Let it be your prayer. Let it be your prayer. Let it even be the strong force of your prayer. Seeking for understanding. Seeking for to have knowledge. Seeking for to have understanding. Seeking for your understanding to be enlightened. It's a prayer that sounds heavy in the ears of heaven. In the ears of heaven and answers will come. As you pray, we will answer. As you pray, we will answer. As you pray, we will answer. For many have been praying wrongly, praying concerning some needs, praying concerning some things, praying concerning some things, but pray mm. this one first. Pray this one first. Mm. Pray this one first. Pray this one first. Then you will see that what you really need is understanding. Understand. Ah, this is wonderful. What we really need is understanding. When you understand, there are, there are a lot of troubles that we can escape if we have understanding. Yeah. Understanding. Look at that woman that was going for prayer for healing. Meanwhile, what she needed was not healing. What she needed was just grace to forgive. All she needed was grace to forgive and she will be healed. And then if, if that man did not have that uh, word of knowledge or whatever to identify her problem, she would have been prayed for, she would go home and die. And she would be dying just, justly. Under justification that somebody took my husband. And I'm justified to keep, but not knowing that she's breaking the law of life. What we need is understanding. A lot of just, 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 just grounds that we stand on. Understanding we collect it from us. Understanding. God will just show you the true picture. Are you, did you remember that guy that went to Jesus? Say, tell my brother to give me my own inheritance. As far as it's concerned, is the brother that has a problem. Yeah. The brother is not just. He, he took Jesus to let him know, say, beware, beware of covetousness. He was not seeing that. Hi. You know, he was not saying that. He was not saying, even if he sees covetousness, another justification will tell him that I'm right. I'm right. I mean, the, the inheritance is our father's inheritance. We ought to share it. It's like when my brother went to sell uh, our father's land and he took the money alone. Mm, uh, he said, they should not tell me. They should not tell me because I'm a lady that uh, girls don't have a share. In the but when our father was alive, he was not a man. <laughs> he was not a man. It was the ladies that took care of our father and buried him without his one naira. He suddenly realized that he has become a man now. <laughs> when it is time to share inheritance, he became a man and took everything. And I was so, because when my father died, my uncle gave him money to give to me. And gave him money for his father's burial. And he came. He came the night before we were taking the course to the east. And I said, if I, we had forgotten that we had given out that he was coming. The fabric I made for the burial, I gave his own to the tailor. I told the tailor, hold on, don't sew it. I had to call Lagos that night. Because we were moving the corpse from Ibado. My father lived and died in Ibado. So I had to call the tailor in the night to please sew the dress over the night. So that people coming from Lagos will bring it for him. Because he's the first son, so that he can wear it. So I said, where is the money? My uncle, where did you, what did you bring for your father's burial? He said, ah, I'm not the first person whose father will die and will not have money to bury him. That was his response. I said, okay, where is the money they said you should give to me? At least my uncle told me that he gave you $300 those days. $300 those days to give me. And he gave you two, $300 for your father's burial. I said, okay, why is the one they told you, at least if you have spent your own, why is the one they gave you to give to me? He said he will give me. I said, when? So in the morning, 
I said, where is the money now? Let me go and change it. Because we had many cars going to where, for the barrier. The bus, the ambulance that we we're going to and there was for scarcity. I said, give me the money. Let me go and change it in Sabo so that we can foil the cars. He said he borrowed the money. I said, eh? You borrowed money. You borrowed money that they gave you to give to me. And you came without any money for your father's burial. And you are telling me he's, you are not the first person. My head. I said, Kai, I'm going to get you arrested. And they will collect your passport. You will not be able to go back to where you came from. So my, my mother started pleading, please, oh, please, oh. So I left him. We got home. The juice I brought from Lagos to do entertainment during the reception. I put it in the boot of the car. When it was time for reception, I said, let me go and take the juice so, so we can. I got to the boot. Not one carton was left. I started crying. I started crying. I said, can you imagine? He said, we drank it now during the wake up. Hey, they drank everything. <laughs> can you imagine the height of provocation? You didn't bring anything. The ones I brought, you consumed. The one they gave you to give me, you said you borrowed it. So we, I cried. He said, ah, ah. Is it because of juice that you are crying now? <laughs> so we finished the bed and we went. I didn't know how he discovered that our grandfather had land that belonged to him. He just relocated to the village and sold the land and told everybody, don't tell how, because women don't have share in property. I said, eh. So all the things he did during the my father's burial, everything, the attitude, everything, just came back. I said, Kai, I will deal with this boy. I will deal. You know what the Lord told me? He said, peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace. You know that kind of instruction, peace. You are, you are thinking that this guy will be feeling cool now that nobody is, is taking him up. Shea, you understand? He has done everything he liked. And the Lord said, peace, peace, peace. Because peace is righteousness. Peace is the way and it's life. Peace, he that will love life and see good days, let him pursue peace. Let him ensure it. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man can see the Lord. Peace, he wants me to see him. So he said, peace, that case looked messy. He looked like cheating. He looked like you didn't take care of this man one day. One day, me and my sister took care of him. Not one day. And then you said, they are ladies. Don't bring them into this issue. Did you suddenly remember that you are a man? The Lord said, peace, peace, peace. So I kept quiet. As he was saying peace, I was keeping quiet. Peace, peace, peace. Until I finally sealed my lips. And he didn't do anything to him. I left him. He squandered all the money. The car he bought with the decent, they came to collect the car from him. He now sent me a text. He said, I need money, oh, I need money, I need help, oh, I need help. <laughs> I need help, oh. They want to come and carry my car oh, for 30,000. I should please send him 30,000. I just laughed. You know what my husband did? My husband sent him money. I didn't have grace to send him money. I must not know. <laughs> I must not lie now. <laughs> I didn't have the grace. But my husband had the grace. He knows more than me, so he should behave better than me. <laughs> He said, I will send him. So he sent him 10,000 instead of 30. Ah. That's... So 
A lot, you need to die to being cheated. You're right. To make progress with God. There are high judgments. So when God told that boy, beware of covetousness, he never knew that he was covetous. But he was standing on his right. At times when we are standing on our right, we are standing on a wrong premise. It, it will take God to throw light on where you are standing. For you to shift. And you need to be meek to be able to admit that I'm standing on, my, on a wrong premise. Because you are, you'll be consumed by your right. It will take God to show you life. Mercy. Mercy must appear to us in these days that we are in. Mercy that will bring judgment that will save us from death. Let's begin to thank him. Mercy. Ask for mercy. Ask for light. Ask for judgment. As for grace to align when judgment comes, the judgment that will make you more little, the judgment that will make you smaller. When it comes, as for grace, Lord, help me to accept it because what is at stake is life. What is at stake is kingdom. It's not your brother. Your brother is not at stake. It's kingdom that is at stake. The life of your children, they are on the line waiting for obedience from you. The lives of our children are on the line waiting for obedience from us. Obedience from us. Obedience from us. Obedience from us. Our children will be so blessed. That is the legacy you leave for your children. Righteous living. It has a way of affecting your children. Righteous living. Righteous living. Righteous living. God said concerning Abraham, I know Abraham, my friend. He will train his children to follow me. He's not just talking to them. The, the son watched the father obey God. He watched the father obey God. He too aligned. Can you pay that sacrifice for your children? To live a godly heritage for your children. Let a part of righteousness be painted for your children to walk in. A part of meekness, a part of lowliness for your children to walk in. Pay the price. Pay the price for you to live and your children also to live. In this generation where children are dying, where children are being taken, Satan is setting trust for our children. We pay the price. We pay the price of obedience, of humility, of meekness. So that our generation after us will live. We too we will live. 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 We will import the, the doctrine of heaven. The standards of heaven. We will agree with them. And will become heavenly. And be backed by the powers of heaven. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the grace that you have brought to us this morning. Can we just rise up on our feet as we just commit ourselves to the Lord concerning all the things that we have heard? No, that as you have heard these things, that grace will be made available for us to walk in everything. The Lord will give us the strength. He will strengthen our feet to walk in these ordinances. These are ordinances of righteousness. Can you just lift up your hands to the heavens and ask God for grace. God, we ask for grace. We ask for strength. Pray that the Lord will strengthen you in your inner man so that you'll be able to walk in all these ordinances that has been shown to us. The Lord will make your feet strong. The Lord will make your feet strong. First of all, I want you to agree with the Lord in your heart. The Lord, I agree that these standards are right, that these ways are right, and God, I receive the strength to walk in this righteousness that you have revealed to us this, this, this morning. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Father, for revealing these things. Blessed are our ears for hearing these things. Blessed are our eyes for seeing these things revealed to us. Father, we thank you. 
and we receive strength. We receive the strength needed to walk in these things. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Help us to walk in lowliness. Help us to walk in lowliness. Help us to reduce and that you increase. Help us to become lowly. Lowly in hearts. We want to be lowly in our hearts. Lowliness of hearts. Lowliness of hearts. Lowliness. 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 Help us to be lowly. To be lowly as you are. Help me to be lowly. True lowliness of hearts. Help me to be lowly in hearts. In my heart, help me to be lowly. Walk, do a walk inside my soul. Lowliness, a walk of lowliness. A walk of lowliness. Reduce my heights. Every height that I've gained in this world, take it down and grant me true lowliness of hearts. Lowliness of hearts. So that I can have entrance. Entrance into your things, into your very life. Lowliness of hearts. Because you are lowly. Loneliness is true holiness. Help me to be lowly, my Lord Jesus. Help us, Father. Loneliness. Holy, lonely. Holy, lonely. Jesus, you are holy. Yeah, oh, so lonely. I for showing yourself to us your loneliness your loneliness height of holiness your loneliness which depicts your height of holiness your height of separation thank you our father we are grateful to you we are grateful help us to keep seeing you keep opening our eyes to see your loneliness amen we can have our seat. You know, we thank, thank you, mommy. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for, 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 for this beautiful 
message, this for unveiling Christ to us and making us to see, you know, this righteousness. You know, that, like I was saying in the morning that there are certain things that we will never see until they help us to see. That in your, in your, in no matter what, no matter if you even do the Bible study or you even pray the prayer, you will still, in fact, you will use the Bible study to reinforce your disobedience. You understand what I'm trying to say? To, so sometimes, so God, God, they really have to, sincerely, so they really have to really send help to us from above to make us see these things, to make us see what it means to be lowly, what it means not to have your own reputation. No, no, we, we read all these, all these scriptures. Have you not read them before? We, we read them, we know them, but you know, many times we can't, they are, they are just too high that we can't comprehend that it takes God raising someone. And that, you know, that's, that's one thing. That's why we must always appreciate. Can you appreciate mommy again? That's why, you see, if you don't, if you don't appreciate gifts, you are finished though. Sincerely, if you don't appreciate the gifts that God sent, you have already finished. You can't make progress. Amen. You see, that's why you must, you must appreciate what God has done in people. Oh. You, must, you must, you see, it's something that you must constantly do. Because when God wants to bring light, God will not just drop down, bam, and just show you light. God will raise people that he will walk that light in them. And then those people can now come. They will show you that light. And, you know, when, when God even wants to now finish the work, those people would have walked in that light, that it will make it very easy for you to identify it. And you know what? Follow, you know, like in Ephesians 3, when Paul was, when Paul was talking about himself, he said that he is a prisoner of Christ. Can you give me that Ephesians chapter 3? I just want you to see something so that we can, you know, it's good to, it's good to understand these things so that we can know how God is working amongst us. I think it's Ephesians 3. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, not for himself, oh, it was for you. So sometimes God puts some people in prison. Like when was telling us in the morning, that said, God told you that I'm a prisoner. He said, God will be in you because of us. You know, I know God is working things in you, but no, sometimes God, God put people in chains, not even because of themselves. They will inherit their own whatever, but God does it sometimes just to show mercy, so that they can, no, no, all the things that Moses went through, it was not really because of Moses himself, it was because of the children of Israel, so he said, ah, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, verse 2, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given me, not for me, oh, but for what? For to you what? So the things that God gave to Paul, it was not even because of Paul. God gave him those things because God was thinking of all those things. So all those things, all, some of the examples she's, she went through, that's why we must not fail. Oh. Sometimes some of the things that God takes us through, it's not even because of you. It's because God is looking at a generation that is tied to you. That when you fail in those things, you will not be, in the days when they need you to help those generations, you will have nothing to give them. So he said, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me, to you, word. Verse 3. Out that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. He said, all these things that they are telling us, loneliness is a mystery. Oh. The way, you no, know, like when we say, the way we are configured, we are configured God to vow, we are configured to hold our right. If, you know, like he said, even when you are small, somebody beats you, they are, go back, they show, oh, yeah, 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 go back, they show. But in a young post, I am beating that, slapping back. Hey, give me the second one again. They are teaching you how to even, you don't understand, how to, um, how to fight for your rights. They are teaching you how to fight for your rights, how to stand for your rights. They would, you know, and culture, you know, and, 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 and it's, not their, it's not our parents' fault too. That was the light they knew, which is darkness. So you can see Paul now saying that they had to, it was by revelation. It was not flesh and blood though. It was by revelation that they now made known unto him this way. This, you know, see this way our life that described it to us is mysterious to a carnal man. So they had to reveal those ways. As I wrote a four in four in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may do what? Understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So those things were given to Paul and God 
Paul was communicating those things to them so that they can do what? They can come into understanding. So you see some of these things that we are hearing, you know, God gave, God, God worked those things in. Mommy gave out those things so that for us, so that we can understand this mystery. Like I said, sometimes even if you read your Bible, it's good to do Bible study. It's good to do Bible study. It's good to pray. And sometimes these things, they just, they're just hidden. You need them to be what? Unveiled. You need them to be revealed. And so God sends people to come and paint these things to us. They don't just speak them even as I sound the revelation. God even works the example in them. You know, like he said in the Bible, so these things are written for what? Your example. So see some of those examples she gave. Those examples are not just natural examples because she just wants to build something. Saying, Why is it always up? It's not about herself. It's not about just wanting to share what I've gone through. Those examples, God allowed her to go through those examples because of you and I. So that we you know something. I was still telling my husband, that sometimes when they are preaching, if it is when 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 revelations are coming, understandings are coming. Sometimes there's a way you can, you can, you can still be, you can still dodge it. But now when they give example, it's as if they just mirrored you. They just extrayed your life. Said so you know that there is no what, no hiding place. I know that ah, a millenia, you a millenia. You know, like, that's like when they told David that somebody did this. You know, they, they, you know, so Nathan was still sharing revelation. He said, ah, the person we must kill him. You did not see himself until they now said, you were You are the person. So some of these examples come so that we can see ourselves and see the things, the things that are in us that needs to do what that needs to change. So we thank God, mommy. We really and we must keep praying for mommy. We must keep praying for her that she would walk in these things. You know, like Titus chapter 2 says, let older women, eh? What should they do? They should teach younger women how to love their husband. I don't know how to love my husband, sincerely. I was telling my husband, I said, when we married, ah, oh, you're foolish, buruku, buruku. You know, I was saying, I said, I said ah, fe, looking at um, um, this uh, newly young couple that sat here yesterday, um, don't know, I said, ah, I just said, they are lucky. Said because when we we married, we knew uh, submit to your husband. Though, but we just we knew it. We knew something, but you know, it wasn't the picture wasn't this clear. So I can mess up, puny. You can't show this is nonsense, and you will think that you are doing well as a woman. You even feel that you are doing well. Said until light came and we began to see our folly, and we began to change. So God has raised these women for us, so that we can know how to love our husband. You know. But love of time, love of Nollywood, Hollywood. Yeah, our parents were well, more, you know. Those are, the, but you know, God is teaching us what true, what it means to love our husband, how to be a good parent. You know, the word we tell you that you should teach your children to be strong, they should be resilient. So even when somebody said, so why did you talk bad? When he said, you know, but now we are seeing a, a new conversation of how to raise children. So they are teaching us, you know, this said that he may teach younger women to be sober. You know that most women today, not these feminist women, they have made women cantacaros. If the man gives you one like this, we give him ten. The guy will just know his size. And don't, so, but teach them to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Verse 5. To be discreet, chest, holy women, keep us at home, good Obedience to their own husbands. That the word of God be not word blasphemed. Have you thought all these things? Have these women thought all these things? Yes or no? You know, I was saying, no, you know, you, you know, when mommy Adebola came the last time, and as she was preaching, you know, she was preaching and she was using all those examples. You know what God told me? God said, This is my definition of beautiful women. That this is a beautiful that as far as heaven is going. You know, it was so during that it was so clear. God said, this, uh, this is my beautiful daughter of Zion. Forget all those Nengi Pengi, they showed us, show us on Facebook, all those messages, but those ones are not beautiful. Though. No, some of us are the people we see that they are beautiful. Those ones are not, they are, they are corrupt. There is nothing of God in them. These are beautiful men, say beautiful women. And like my husband, we say they are endangered special. Even amidst, sorry to say, even amidst uh, men, uh, women of God out there, they are not plenty. This woman, these people are endangered species. But no, God is restoring those, that generation of women. You know what God wants to do? God wants to produce people like that. He wants to produce many daughters. Not only women, no, they've thought us that both men and women are all daughters to Christ. People, beautiful, beautiful men. You know, Kisha, like my mother said, not boss men. 
not those boss, Edward. No, they are not raising Edward. They are raising Christ, man. You know, beautiful men. When you see them tender, loving, they can give themselves, lay themselves down for their wife. You know, those are the kind of people God is raising today. Can we just thank God for these wonderful vessels that God has used to bless us in this month of June? I want you to thank God for Mommy Adenabola. Thank God for, for Mommy Helen. Thank God for Mommy Busui. Thank God for Reverend Busui and the wife. Thank God for these gifts. These are gifts that God has sent to us to show us light, to unveil His ways to us. Father, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. Amen. And you see all these things that have come, we don't have an excuse. We'll tell them, but say you don't have an excuse. You see, if somebody has not done it before, then you say you have an excuse. You know, if it is Jesus, I said Jesu. It's not just Jesus now. Mommy Adebala has done some of those things. Mommy Ali has done those things. Pastor Reverend Busi has done those things. So you don't have what? An excuse. And grace is available. Tell them, but say grace is available. So what we are going to do, just after this message, is, I think families should go back home, listen to all these messages together. Pick instructions, or maybe instructions that God has given you, list those instructions. You know, it's like, you know, we have six months to the end of the year. That's your, another vision for the next six months. We want to see how we can implement all these things by the grace of God in our family. How can we work in all these things that we have Listed and you have scorecard. Say, my husband, my husband, she, 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 you ask him, am I, am I getting better in these things? And you have to say, am I getting better in these things? Am I getting better in these things? We must be able to do that, else we'll just receive the grace. And just like the people that receive talent and did not work with it and just kept it, we must not be like that. Say, we won't be like that. Say, we will trade with these words. Say, I will trade with these commandments and instructions. So what, what can, when Family Life Summit has come to an end, but work has just begun. That is the truth, you know. Our children, parenting, you know, there are some things that I see in Anuna that have been complaining. I found that is me. I've just discovered my mom, I don't know, I say, hey, you don't know, I want to come to more, you know, it's me, oh, it's my conversation. She's what, she's looking at in this area that is making her to do this. So that means, even though God has been knocking on this thing and I've not been responding, I said, I have to do quick and leave that position. Before she takes the place. And yet, when children take certain things, they do it more than you. So, we should not work in rebellion. No, men, don't work in rebellion. Ladies, don't work in rebellion. So, because if you work in rebellion, by the time your children pick the rebellion, they will help you amplify it. They will help you amplify it. So, these things, we must go back home as families. We must take all these instructions prayerfully, you know, and with instructions, you know. Make sure that we take all these things one after the other and do what? And begin to live by them. Mommy, we want we can't thank you enough for Esheo. Thank you for responding to God. And that we are doing where? Well. We are following, you know. No person they say, follow me. As I do what? As I follow Christ. So even when you follow people don't know, like uh, oh, they, ma, they used to say, follow those that know road. Abby. When you follow somebody that knows road, you know you will get. And it is scriptural. If you read songs of Solomon, there was a time Paul was, it was this, um, there was uh, one of writers asking that, where do you feed your flock? Was asking, um, can you let me look for that scripture? Was asking that, where do you tell me where you feed your flock? You know, see, the person did not answer. And what he said was, I should follow him as he's leading that flock. Let me look for that scripture. It's in songs of Solomon. I just paraphrased it. So those things, so not someone say follow up, no, the road will just think it's a slang. It's not a slang, go. it's a principle of the spirit. Following those that are as they are following Christ, just just follow. And I'm sure I've shared this testimony. If thou okay, if thou know not, oh thou, tell me, oh thou who my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou make thy flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? Verse eight said, If thou know not, oh thou fearest, that was the response among women, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock. He said, Follow the flock. So, was actually, Where do you feed them? He said, You know what you do? Just follow those flocks. Go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tent. Say, Follow those that know road. Don't go and be follow. You know, some of us want to be beautiful. Me, I, I like flight on me. I like fine face. So it's good though. But you see, that's not beauty. 
This when you are thinking about when you are dream makeup in the morning, you're looking at a bit around my mom, I'm my day bola, I'm a mommy, and you feel fine, you know, so me feel submissive. I want to be like a child to my husband. You know, you know, most I don't want to be like a child. I just want to say I have. No, my husband was still saying it um, three days ago that most women that when, when they grow, the older they get, the more they, they stand in their own ways. That's why you will see some women, initially, um, those traditional women, when they started, they were maybe because their husband were a boss man, they were submissive. But by the time they grow older, they will now start showing the man that, you know, they start showing the man, you know, understand? Because as you grow older, you now, they become, they become tougher. But you see, it's the other way around in the spirit. The older we get in the spirit, the more tender we become. The more they can ride us. The more they can cheat us. You know, the more we can lay down our own rights. And be more, and you know, the more we can allow God to walk through us. So all these things. So, so when you're looking at this, look at all these women in front. Look at those examples. You know, I've, I've shared testimony. Say when I was in school, I used to like... Um, shoe and bag a lot. There's nothing, as I said, there's nothing I cannot spend on shoe and bag. We save money. I want to buy shop. So when I had mommy and you know, and I've been praying to God, I know that that thing it was one covetousness in me that had to die. But it, it did not go. When I just see, I can carry any amount of money. I'm going to use it to buy shoe and bag. Until I had a message in 2006, and she was sharing that that any money she has not dropped in the offering basket like this. That she cannot use it to buy shoe. That was the word. I just saw, I just decided, I just held on to that instruction. That before I can buy any shoe, I will check myself. I want to buy 50,000. She moti, your recent she moti 50,000. Nye juicy, no offering basket. If I've not done that, then you see that, that instruction, just following that instruction, just saved my soul and broke that jinx of when you see one shoe that you don't even care how much it is, you just want to buy it. So sometimes you just follow those instructions, all those little examples that they look those examples are not just examples they are examples by the spirit now things that God has orchestrated so that we can do them Pastor Friday. Jesus, help us come again. Amen. Just as it came to you before it has come to many. Amen. Help us come. Amen. Help us come. Many instructions, many instructions even came for the, from the illustrations Amen. that were given. Help us come. Many have seen themselves even while those illustrations have given. Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Amen. Not just help, grace and strength has come as well. Amen. It has come to you. It has come to you. It is time to break loose. It is time to break. It is time to break that, that bondage. It is time to break that yoke. It is time to break that yoke of lust. That yoke of lust. That yoke that you have tried to break. You have done all you can, but it remains. It. it is time to break it. Help us come. Help us come. Do likewise. You will be set free indeed. Amen. Thank you. So once again, I want all of us to rise up and say thank you to mommy. Mommy, thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. We celebrate you. Tell me, say, mommy, we celebrate you. Say, we love the dimension of God in you. And we are following you as you follow Christ. Say, we are following you as you follow Christ. Say, we love you, mommy. Love you so much. I shake Kukoma. Thank you so much, man. Hallelujah. Amen. We have been so blessed in this meeting. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, we my heart is so overwhelmed. I'm just quantifying the level of grace that has come. Um, this weekend, so so terrible the righteousness. Hallelujah. We give God thanks. I, I believe we are changing. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to congratulate every family here. All you need to run well has been brought to you. 
Uh, it's not as difficult as you think. You just be willing to lay down your life. And then to the singles, we have more singles in church, so God is helping you. Your your sight is is being straightened. You can see clearly. Um, we 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 thank God for mercy that He has shown this generation. I appreciate these very precious vessels um, that God has sent. This month has been a very, very peculiar month. Um, we received a lot of choice ministry gifts. Uh, along, along the way, God made Daddy also come to bless us. It was just, just God just arranged it that way. And so I just thank God. I know that for us corporately, it's a new day. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. It's a new day corporately. Uh, I just personally have noticed that the grace is also, I don't know, water level is rising. You know, that's the word that's been coming to us. And we see the grace rising. So, um, my prayer has been that we'll be faithful. Uh, just while you were ministering, mommy, that's what I was praying. Lord, just make me faithful. And faithful to be able to live out all this conversation in the days of my flesh. Faithful, faithful. Lord, Lord make me faithful. Um, I, I don't want to leave the head before due time. In the light of all this. You know, um, of course, one reason to want to live long is to be able to, to, to finish this course. Uh, and as well, at times when maybe God intervenes and takes somebody, maybe before time, you said something about, yes. And now I, I can, you know, I, I now understand some things clearly. I don't want to give God a problem. Uh, imagine that God thinking, doing meeting concerning bringing me home. Because they are doubting if I can continue the course. You know, that, that's it. You know, God is just thinking that be Jesus, you know, is it not better we take this guy home now? Because the way he's looking, you know, we may lose him completely. I just started thinking about that. that I started seeing the blessing in handling time with so much. With, so that's why I was saying, God, make me faithful. And because all the time we have, you know, there's not so much time anymore. If I, I consider myself slow, I'm already in my 40s. Very soon, you'll be 50. You'll be, before you know it, you are 70. So, you know, there's no time. Ah. In the lights that is shining now, like I tell my wife, I tell her, I don't, she'll be praising me. I say, I don't know anything. I'll tell her, I say, me, you know anything. This thing that is shining now, we don't know anything. It's as if we don't even know God. Don't you feel like that? <laughs> we don't know them. We don't know them at all. Ah, we don't know them. Uh, I'm just thanking God for granting us the opportunity to be part of it. Uh, yes, that's, I'm thanking God. And then I'm also, I have hope for the coming generation. You know? Recently the Lord spoke to me, was it like some months ago? He says, Give your next 20 years to the next generation. I know the Lord wasn't saying that I will go 20 years time ago. He was just giving me a vision. Serve them. Labor. So by the time you are in your 60s, you will be proud to see generations serving God well. So I understand that God is thinking of posterity. Mommy, while you were obeying God, God saw us. And God saw beyond us. God saw some of you. Yes, God saw you, saw our children, uh, generation lining up, just following God. Hallelujah. Something great is happening already. My prayer is that God will keep it. You see, all of us that are in this um, kind of churches that God is raising, we have a duty to God. And the duty is to live out what we are hearing. There's no other duty. You know, I think I taught that message well, two Tuesdays ago, hearing and doing. Uh, we, we have no other duty. We just need to do this thing. Because God, God, what many people want to see are just living epistles. They don't want to see, they just want to see people conversing. Imagine your home mirroring all these things. You're already a message. People come around, they'll say, ah. You know, you know the, there's a way people talk about men today. I want Kurinwo, I want Kurinwo Badu. You know, have you heard that before? And there's some women say it confidently. Like they think all men are like that. 
My wife will say, my husband is not like that. She has defended me many times. My husband is not like that. And we have to come to that place where people will say, I know I can count many families that have already started showing what it means for, for God to tabernacle amongst men. Those are the things that we are desiring God for. Can we say amen? amen. The Lord will help us. Amen. So much, but one thing I know, like I said last week after Reverend Busui ministered, I said God has just to start that again. <laughs> for men, because I think Reverend Busui majored on men. So don't think that, uh, you know, I, I used to say that for us, our standard is Jesus, Gongo. You know, because Ephesians 5 says that we should be saviors. You know what it means to be a savior? Ah. That one is, uh, mommy only say it's hard. Our whole is hard. <laughs> to be a savior. Uh, that's, so I don't think any man should be comfortable. That uh, they are helping the women submit to us. Who are you? Oh, Badura. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, you know that your standard is higher. Uh, Remember, we did a good job in showing us the kind of men we should be. Uh, and mommy has also helped us, both the men and the women. Can we say amen? We thank you so much, man, for blessing. Amen. I want to welcome first timers. Um, if this is your first time. In the City Gate Church, I want to have the honor to welcome you to this wonderful assembly. Can you, can you stand to your feet and let's just welcome you? This is your first time in church. Amen. Okay, uh, someone is standing. Okay, I saw a question. I was wondering. Oh, can we just rally around them and just welcome them to this house? Three people. Okay, wonderful. Please, let's just rally around them. You are blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you.